Okay, so we had five tips that we understand. Let's to uh, go to other tips. Okay, so tip number five. This is a very important tip. That will be very useful. Uh, I think tip number six. Okay. Tip number six. Okay. I didn't realize five are over. Now sixth one has to do with what is called compatibility. Okay. When I look at system of rigid bodies, for example, we looked at only the rigid body earlier in the first five tips. Sixth tip we are looking at systems of rigid bodies. Okay. So I am going to explain to you certain things that we have to understand related to that. Okay. For example, this is a simple set of rigid body, two rigid bodies that we already saw in statics. Okay. Now, if each of these bodies are rotating like this, okay, you realize assume they are pinned all the time, huh? they are pinned all the time at this particular point, okay, this yellow point and they are moving. Okay. This goes with some uh, angular velocity, this goes with some other angular velocity and they have different accelerations let us say. Now, if we have to connect them, we connect through this point of the two rigid bodies which is going through the same motion. Okay. Supposing I have one rigid body like this, another rigid body like this. Okay. So, let us say this is point A, this is B, okay. they are pinned here B and this is C. Let us say this is going through say omega A B and acceleration alpha A B, let us say this is going through omega B C and alpha B C. Okay. Now what I know about this particular point is whether it belongs to this body or this body, the velocity of this has to be maintained the same. Okay. Velocity of B as I see from the body a B should be exactly the same as velocity of B with, re with respect to the body B C. Okay. This is true of course, also of R B the position okay, because that is the condition that we used in statics. This is the condition that we used in statics. How about accelerations? It is the same. Okay the motion of that particular point is the same irrespective of which body we are looking at. This is very important and this is the one that connects the motion of this to the motion of this. All, in other words there is a constraint in terms of location, velocity and acceleration when it comes to this kind of pin. We have different kinds of constraints. Okay. Let me show one more constraint. I may have a constraint like this. For example, let us say let me do it better here. Let us say I have a block frictionless here. Moving along a particular uh, slot as shown here, okay, and let's say this is connected to through a particular rod. Let's say the rod is like this. Okay, let's say AB. What have I done here? There is a restraint offered by this kind of slot in such a way that the velocity of A will be along this direction and that is important to note. Okay. That is very important. One more thing, if this is clear, the other thing that we already knew 
from a single rigid body is okay. So, let me say these are about constraints okay. Supposing I have a body which is pinned here, let us say something like this. And let us say it is having an angular velocity and angular acceleration. Okay. What do you know about the motion of this point? Let us say this is A and this is B. I know two things motion of A is 0. Whenever I put a hash like this, it is fixed to the fixed frame of reference uh, at a point here, and therefore the point A is not moving at all velocity is 0, acceleration is 0, also the location is some, uh, some constant location. Okay. How about B? Knowing that this is equal to 0, it is easy for me to write down the directions of the accelerations of and velocity and acceleration of B. The velocity will naturally be like this. Acceleration as such will have a component like this, so this is velocity of B acceleration will have two components one is the tangential acceleration in this direction and another like this which is a in the radial direction or normal direction what is this equal to omega square if this length is r it is omega square r times this direction similarly this is alpha times r times this direction and this is omega times r times this direction. So, it is possible to immediately find out the directions of acceleration and velocity in this kind of situations. This is a special situation because most of the times you will have a motor that is rotating. The axis of rotation is what this is okay, and there may be a rod or something that is transferring the power. Now, this is often used in order to translate a rotatory motion to a linear motion. As you can see, the velocity of A is fixed along a particular direction. Okay. It can be something like this. It can also be some, let me just uh, uh, do a little differently. It can also be something like this, where this point A of this rigid body A B can is restricted to move along a slot that is given. Okay. So, once I know the slot, I know the direction of the motion, the geometry of motion is already specified. I can use the geometry of the motion in order to solve the problem, okay. but these two are very critical. Usually, you will see a, a rotation like this with an angular acceleration or velocity or translation of a rotation rotary motion to a linear motion. Okay. Uh, most of the reciprocating type of uh, pumps will have this kind of thing all right. and these two are very important to understand. Okay. This is the tip related to this. Let us go to another tip. Okay. This is al also a related tip, but it may be worth understanding it separately okay. and that is about what? wheels. We did this exercise to a certain extent in friction, we, will be, we are revisiting in this particular case. Let us say I am going to have a purely rolling wheel, means what? I have something like this and I have a wheel over here. This wheel, let us say only does rolling, there is no, what does that mean? That means that if I take this particular point, okay, let us say this is A prime and this is A, okay, A belongs to the surface on which it is rolling and A prime belongs to 
a point on the wheel okay at that point of contact the velocity of a will be the same as velocity of a prime velocity of a will be the same as velocity of a prime okay vertical velocity depends on the velocity of the surface right supposing if i take two components one component like this and one component like this if it is a rigid surface velocity in the vertical direction is equal to zero right if it is a surface that is moving then the velocity of the these two points is the same as the velocity of this surface which is moving or this wheel that is moving the other velocity of this surface and this surface will match at that particular point okay. not only velocity it will also be the acceleration okay. so but acceleration i'm going to write acceleration of a uh, component along this direction which is perpendicular to the point of contact is the same as acceleration of a prime supposing this is a rigid surface the acceleration of the rigid surface is zero so this is equal to zero the component which is perpendicular to the point of contact so this is the perpendicular direction that direction acceleration is equal to the direction acceleration of a prime okay and these are the conditions that we use in order to solve the problem Spe what is the special case special case is when the surface is attached to fixed frame or in other words the surface is not moving which automatically means that v a equals 0 the velocity of this contact point of the wheel is equal to 0 i'm sorry a prime a prime is the point of the wheel a is the point of the rigid surface since the point of the rigid surface is not moving at all v a prime is equal to 0 remember the vector that i have indicated here okay acceleration of a prime along this direction this component is equal to 0. So, when the when is this valid when there is a pure rolling and when this surface is fixed to the fixed frame of reference. If not if this surface is moving if you know the velocity of this acceleration of this perpendicular to this then you can enforce these conditions these are again constraints as you can see these are the constraints for a system of rigid bodies you can see another constraint over here this is another constraint that we have introduced over here for a wheel okay. most of the problems that you will encounter will belong to any one of these categories or a mixture of these categories okay. knowing this it is now very easy for you to cast the equations which you can use to solve or the kinematics of different sets of rigid bodies all right now there are a few more tips let me just go to one more tip before we enter into solving problems this is also an important tip which has already been told earlier but i'll repeat this over here so that it's easy for you tip number 8 this is a simple tip i am going to look at only one rigid body if there is a rigid body like this this is point a point b supposing this is the direction of the velocity of point a the same is the direction okay so let's say this direction is some um, let me call it as n direction okay let's say this is along n 
and let us say this is also along n. Okay. We can make a few conclusions from this which are very useful when solving problems. The first conclusion is A B undergoes a pure translation along n. Okay. It is not very apparent here unless I state the next one because these two are connected. What is the angular velocity of A B? Remember velocity of B is equal to velocity of A plus this. In order to understand this, I have the other tip that is useful. Velocity of A and velocity of B have to be equal for a pure translation. They have to move like that and this is very important. All right. If it is a pure translation, you will notice that the directions are the same. Velocity of this and velocity of this directions are the same, number one. Not only that, the velocities also will be the same because it is a pure translation. But because of this pure translation, omega a b is equal to 0. It is a very important con conclusion because this is used in many of those problems that you will encounter in your exams. So, from an exam point of view, this is very useful. Understand this very clearly. The, the direction of this velocity and the direction of this velocity should be the same. In that case, I can do make this conclusion that the translation is the only thing that happens. Okay. And remember, in many of the problems, this may be, may be momentary. At a particular moment, the trans, it may go through only a pure translation at a particular time t. And therefore, you cannot do the same thing for acceleration. Remember, if the acceleration of this and acceleration of this are the same, there are two components that will go to 0. Okay. If the directions I am talking about are the same, there is one direction that is along A B and another direction that is perpendicular to A B that could act as an additional contribution and therefore, the acceleration of B and acceleration of A could have same directions, but may have different magnitudes and this holds good only for the velocity. Please remember this clearly. Okay. I think it was Shweta Ketu who asked the question, tell me what is it that I should know, so that I know everything. So, like that tell me what are the tips I should know, so that I can solve all the problems in planar kinematics. So, I think I have exhausted uh, all the tips that you will need in order to solve problems in planar kinematics. Okay. Planar kinetics is a very simple translation and we will take it up at the next module.